spirituality, toxic people, and you. What are you supposed to do? It all gets really confusing. So I just want to give you a few ideas, some things to think about before you go down the rabbit hole of thinking that you're supposed to be this unconditionally loving person accepting all the bad behavior that's coming your way. Because you've likely been very challenged by the idea of how to put your spiritual beliefs into practice when you're faced with a difficult, disturbing, or toxic person in your life. Are you supposed to love them no matter what? Can you express and maintain strong boundaries? What if you belong to a spiritual organization that has rules and expectations that you behave in a certain way? And those difficult, disturbing, and toxic people I call hijackles have all the members believing that they are the salt of the earth. You know, hijackles will show you one face at home, the not-so-nice face, and then they'll put on the pretty public face, and they'll be night and day. So these are big issues when you're following a spiritual path. I know. I walk with so many people in this dilemma. So <clears throat> I've written and spoken about the four ways unconditional love is a dangerous myth. And on the Relationship Help Show, I did a segment on that very thing. You'll find it in episode 23. And it's alone as a segment on my iTunes channel for Relationship Help. So go over there. There's so much for you. So I know to some that the title alone is heresy. That what about unconditional love? Isn't it all or nothing? But imagine the horrible pull, and you may be experiencing it, between wanting to believe that a good person loves unconditionally and then being with a hijackal. That hijackal wants you to love him or her unconditionally, but they have no willingness or interest or even the ability to love you back. I believe that real love flows naturally in two directions. There it is. There's a problem. When love is not flowing naturally in both directions, you know there's an issue. But will you see it? Or will you think that if only you work harder at being more loving, more compassionate, more patient, more kind, less demanding, have fewer expectations or stay out of their way, then everything will be fine? No, it won't be fine. Because love is not flowing naturally in two directions. Hijackles take, take, take. They only give when they have to and if it's going to get them what they want in the moment. Be unconditionally loving when there is mutuality. Otherwise, see the forest for the trees. A hijackal doesn't have love to give you. A hijackal loves what you have to give him or her. Hijackals have uses for you, not love to give you. So, spirituality, hijackals, and you, how do you put these things together? So, here's a few ideas for you. Martin Buber, an Austrian-born Jewish philosopher, wrote a really classic book in 1923. Didn't make it into English till 1934, but it was called I and Thou. And one of the major themes of the book is that human life finds its meaningfulness in relationships. So in Martin Buber's view, all of our relationships bring us ultimately into relationships with God. And in the book, he wrote, get this now, indelibly write it in your head. When two people relate to each other authentically and humanly, God is the electricity that surges between them. Key words, authentically and humanly. That's an equal, reciprocal, and mutual relationship with each other. Not a, uh, you do what I want, and I'll ignore your needs, wants, and feelings completely. You can see why it's important to really dig into what it means to understand your spiritual beliefs and recognize that there are many levels that need to be considered. Of course, you be a person who is aligned with your values. That's your job. That's your life. That's you expressing your beliefs and your values and your uh, ideas about life. That's you fully expressing. That's not you doing backflips when someone tells you to and always feeling not good enough. Those two things just don't go together at all. There are spiritual traditions that are based, based on you feeling worthless 
or at least unworthy. Question those. Those will attract hijackals into positions of power. Can't you just imagine how delighted a hijackal would be to be able to quote scripture to make him or her right and of course make you wrong? I've had clients, you know, I work with the partners, the exes and adult children of these difficult, disturbing and toxic people I call hijackals. I've had clients whose partners have taken leadership roles in churches with very defined, if not rigid, codes of conduct. Those hijackals love, love, love the superiority they gain by making other people feel small, wrong, and unworthy. Worse, in those organizations, the hijackal puts on an amazing show of being the salt of the earth, of being the most righteous of all. And yet at home, their behaviors are like beasts from somewhere far away from heaven. So when the partner of one of these righteous appearing hijackals tries to tell someone in the church how the hijackal behaves at home, guess what? The partner is met with ridicule and shame because the way the hijackal shows up at church and how she or he shows up at home is 180 degrees apart. So the continuously wounded partner gets wounded again at the very place they hope to find solace. I define spirituality simply the experience of a positive and transformative connection. Our spiritual life transforms us and changes us. We will think and feel and behave differently as a result of that transformation. It gets confusing, doesn't it? I've been transformed and the partner pretends to speak the right words while behaving very differently at home. Because you've been transformed, you might think, at least initially, that you should become accepting of the bad behavior at home. No, wrong, don't do that. What is true, though, is that by doing your own work and following your own spiritual path, you are on the path to a positive transformational connection with yourself. It doesn't necessarily follow that that will change your relationships with others. It especially doesn't follow that it will help with the hijackal. So yes, it's confusing, and I invite you to really think this through. Here's a few quick things that hijackals will continue to do at home while putting on a false face at church. They will put you down, saying that you don't practice what you preach at every moment. And remember, hijackals never look in the mirror, so the fact that he or she never practices what they preach at home will never be of any interest to them. It's all about winning over you and making you wrong. They will bully you, laugh at you, and put you down for not, quote unquote, getting it. Wow, that wouldn't be judgment, would it? Of course it is, but to a hijackal, that street only goes one way. Hijackals are never wrong. Well, what can I say about that, except that it is an absolute in their eyes that they are never wrong. They cannot and will not handle any criticism. Strange, however, that they feel free to criticize you constantly. And they tell you that you are misguided, mistaken, and stupid to manipulate you into letting them tell you what to do. So big note here, you can never, ever please a hijackal for more than a moment. So think about that. So here you have some thoughts about how to think about life with a hijackal when you're following your own spiritual paths and some clear patterns that hijackals will use to belittle you if you are following the same path supposedly together. Think about these things. It's so important to your well-being and safety. Be sure also to come and visit at forrelationshiphelp.com and hijackals.com. Get your free copy of an ebook, How to Spot a Hijackal, in case you're wondering if you're with one. Talk soon.